Like, is it, is it really necessary? You got to do it right now? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so here we go. And just to make sure Carrie isn't waiting. Mm-hmm. Get on, you baby. <laughs> All right, here we go. Welcome back, everybody, to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus Musicians Mastermind. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini. If you are interested in joining our mastermind, uh, we're always looking for folks to come and hang out, uh, get their uh, perspectives on things, as well as answer any questions you might have. There is a link in the description below, uh, both on YouTube and in the show notes. So check it out. It's just a Facebook group. Right now, it's totally free. So this is the time. <laughs> At some point in the future, Joe and I are planning on, you know, doing a more of a, doing some kind of paid thing. At the moment, it is free, so this is the time to get in on it. Check out the link below. I've got uh, Joe Freeman uh, with us today, and I believe that Carrie J.K. is joining us right uh, I think I admitted him. Carrie, did I admit you into the group? Yes. All right. Carrie. <laughs> Carrie is here as well. Carrie J.K. Hey there. There he is. Okay. You can tell he's a performer. He likes to enter at the right time. He's uh, make I a, make my entrance everywhere. <laughs> make a big entrance. <laughs> um, but today is uh, the title of today's call is "Time is Not on Your Side." Time is running out. Yep, you're young and you got the whole your whole life ahead of you. But as minutes turn into hours, hours to days, days to weeks, weeks to month, months into years, you may wake up one day to wonder where did the time go and what have I really done. On this week's call, we take a hard look at the subject of time and energy management. As life puts more demands on your time, it becomes more and more important to have a strategy for managing your time and not letting it get away from you. So, a little bit of a, it could be kind of a serious topic today. It's important though, so we want to to talk about it. Um, And I'm going to start by saying I think one of the biggest holdups for folks uh, is to not start, just start, set down, sit down. As uh, Stephen Pressfield says in his book, The uh, War of Art, sit down and do your work. Start, mm-hmm. start doing something, get into action. Um, well, it's better to be doing something than to be doing nothing. Absolutely. Um, so what are your guys thoughts on, on this? I mean, there's a lot of things I want to, we, we want to talk, we're going to probably talk about, uh, you know, planning, goal setting, uh, you know, stuff like that, prioritizing where, uh, but, but the first thing I just wanted to say was just, just to start, sit down and start doing the thing, whatever that is, writing the song, uh, mixing the, 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 the music that you've recorded, practicing, Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what, whatever it is you got, write, writing that uh, blog, uh, recording that podcast, cutting that YouTube video, start doing it. Just start. Don't talk. If you wait too, if you think too much, you, you talk yourself out of things. Go ahead, Gary. I mean, one thing I will sort of say about this is it's like getting into a lot of this. It's like sometimes I talk about so like turning on the tap or the faucets or whatever, however you want to call it. Um, it's about getting a trickle going. And the trickle becomes a flow. But if you want it to be a flow straight away, then you're going to frustrate yourself a whole lot while you're still getting going. And that and that and that stands not just for running a business, but just for um, anything you do creatively. In a way, um, the fact that you can so easily do so much on the Internet and so many communities and so many people that will encourage you to do it is a wonderful thing. It can be a very daunting thing. And sometimes you'll run into people where it's like pressure to just like get stuff out as quickly as possible and never actually work on anything. <clears throat> In fact, I've actually known people actually abuse newcomers for actually redrafting. So that's why one of the basic rules of writing that the, your first draft is not going to be your final cut and it shouldn't be. And if it isn't, then do some work. Um, and sometimes there'll be all these ideas and it seems to be like um, getting... Get, Excuses for people not to um, do any redrafting or just to put out something quickly. Get into a habit of creating and always um, doing it. And and so the point being, so it's not about not putting stuff out until it's ready all the time, but making sure that you've got enough build up so you've always got something that's ready and something that's on the back burner and something that might just hit it. 
this is what a lot of people don't realize it's about about creative professionals is that what you actually see them release is maybe 10 percent of what they've put to, of what they've um, put together in the studio it's like one of the ways you can always tell a newbie is they'll like boast about how many songs they've written and how that makes them better than everyone else and you, and the reason why you know that's a newbie or someone who's green is because they don't know that everybody's written at least as much as that it's just that they don't put it out until they know that it's ready because the more rubbish you put out the more it's going to distract away from the good stuff that you really want to put out and um you don't know what's good until you've gone through the whole process that, so, that, yeah absolutely also uh the pros also have stuff things not so much that they're not going to release but they're they've got different things in different stages and i think you alluded to that when you mm. at the beginning of your conversation so they might they've got something done and they've got different things in different stages of drafts as well so that you can get the illusion that they're just cranking out you know that they just sit down they write a song and they put it out well they probably that to get to that point they have different things in different stages kind of at the ready and as they're releasing this one they've got this other one that they've been honing and tweaking and working on as well i just wanted to add that to what you're saying absolutely yeah um and actually i've actually been looking at a few writing communities for another project um this past week and one of the things is there's a lot of communities that are geared towards those various stages um and in music as well i've often said that i use soundcloud for pre-release that stuff that's coming out, but it's not ready yet. And then I'll grade different platforms depending on where it is with the release. So, so Spotify and that lot, that, that's the last level of release because I can't change that easily. So by the time I've released something on Spotify, it's already been around various other platforms that I can gauge audience on. Um, but coming back to writing, one place to see it is um, stand-up comedy. If you go to any comedy club and you watch a guy who's doing it, the whole art of stand-up comedy is making it look like you're just talking off the top of your head. When in act actuality, that guy has spent ages writing that material. Years sometimes. Uh, workshopping yeah. it, trying it in different fronts of different audiences, seeing what works, seeing what didn't, and then taking bits out and going back there. And after about 50 shows and however much redrafting, he's ended up with this bit that looks like he's just making it up as he goes along. It's, uh, of course I'm, he isn't. That's one of the hardest gigs ever. Mm. I would never, ever. I would, it's so funny you mention it because I was just listening to Joe Rogan before I, well, you know, I, I started the, the call and him and he had a couple of guys on from the Sopranos who were both actually did stand up comedy as well. And they were it's exactly what they were talking about. And I'm like, and every time I've heard Stern talk about it over tons of people, I'm like, no way, man. But that is a good, really good example of just like honing it. You go out and you, mm. if it goes to like a, see like open stage comedy night. <laughs> <laughs> The same thing happens with third people's marketing um, mm -hmm. spills. Like, you know, you get those like Malinchek and them, they get up and they do that stage presentation where they speak and then they go through like their back history and then, you know, what the problem you're facing is and they try to identify with you and everything. If you listen enough, you realize that they're all doing the same speech over and over and over and over <laughs> and over again. Yeah. I mean, like the other, I mean, the other little um, clear is it's something else that goes along. Is, um, you only notice it when it's done badly. But you know the thing about um, the staged ad lib, or when something goes wrong in the show, and that's something else, like there's a lot of. Uh, that's an old, it's a bit of an old cliche, and people sort of wise right. to it now. Okay, so, uh, where they'll write something in where the show goes wrong, so they go off script for a bit. And it's only when you see the same show a couple of times you realize the same thing went wrong three or four nights in a row, and you realize what's happening. Also, you you get better at handling those situations just mm. intuitively. So, um, mm -hmm. start, get in. Don't worry about that. You might take you ten, twenty drafts or whatever. Start, get into it. What I want to ask you guys and what you thought about planning and goal setting. How much planning? How far ahead should people be planning things out? I know, I know I have my feelings on it. I think this is a kind of what yeah. kind of works for one person, maybe be a little bit different for somebody else. Right. But what are your thoughts on it, guys? Can we mention smart targets here? Have you heard about them? No, go ahead. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a UK thing. I'm pretty sure that it's... Um, what is it again, smart but, targeting? SMART is an acronym, S-M-A-R-T. Oh. And what it is, it's about the type of... Um, uh, and it's about the targets you're going to set yourself as you're doing any project. And the acronym, the letter SMART, um, I've got this while well since I've done this. I've got to remember what they are. Um, oh, crack, what was it? I know the N is for measurable. 
A is for attainable. R is for realistic. T is for timely. And it's bugging me that I can't remember what S stands for. Specific. <laughs> right. Like so you S can stands Google for it. specific, <laughs> measurable, attainable, realistic, timely. The A, um, these two, because they're kind of synonyms, I've heard different words for these two at different times when people have gone on. Are you getting this the right way around in the camera, by the way? Oh, yeah. Actually, we are. Okay, good. Um, so... The idea is that if you just go into any project and just have a woolly goal and you don't know vaguely what it is, but you might get it, you might not, but it won't be organized and you won't really know if you've done it. And also the chances of you petering out are pretty much dependent on how much you like doing whatever it is. Um, so this is about nailing down exactly what it is you're trying to accomplish and exactly how it is you're going to do it. Um, so when you're setting your targets, Specific means you need to know exactly what it is you're going to do. Not just, I'm going to sell records. I'm going to sell this record to these people. Um, just something... Some, the, it's got to be specific enough so you know when you've done it. It's basically what it is. These are all... Um, we'll get to like sort of short and medium term later. Measurable is the same thing. Um, it means, ideally, if it's something you can measure with numbers, that's brilliant. And um, certainly I've heard, um, a lot of the examples I've seen in project management business studies love ones that you can measure with numbers and statistics. So it could be I am going to sell 50 copies of this record, which isn't a lot. But let's just use that as an example off the top of my head. Well, that that goes to attainable. Maybe that's what's attainable for you. Exactly. Because that's the other thing. You've got a thousand you can fans. Easily you're going to sell yourself maybe a target yeah. mm. that... Um, you're dreaming. It's never going to happen. And what's going to happen is that when you hit, as soon as you've failed a few of those in a row, you're going to leave yourself really depressed and not really wanting to do anything more. So you've got to be attain. You've got to be attainable and realistic about exactly what it is you're able to do. But like I could say, if I had to say that I'm going to play guitar like um, Steve Vai by next week, forget it. It's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> I mean, like that's that is an unrealistic target, and it's certainly not attainable. Um, I think that I think the difference between realistic and attainable realistic is partly sort of seeing who you are and how much time you're going to be able to put together it. Whereas attainable means physically attainable. So it means having the resources. For example, if you decide that my my target is to reach the moon, but I don't have access to a space program, <laughs> then it's not attainable. Right. Right. I got you to choose an extreme example. Whereas realistic also goes into you personally. And it's like, am I actually going to do this thing? And, or am and, I just and, trying to convince myself? And, and, in, ter and in terms of the time. Absolutely. Um, you know, time-based. So, so time-based. What do you, now I, I think that we could set, we could talk about, you know, this a little bit. Um, time-based goals. I think that there is a place for shorter term and longer term. There's a hmm. time, there's a, you know, because sometimes if you, if you set up goal to do something in too long of a period of time, um, you don't know who you're going to be in three years. Yeah, you know what I mean? You may, anymore. you may have, I may say that, yeah. you know, I want to, you know, have the top, you know, heavy metal album or whatever, but maybe after a year and a half, I go like, I'm burnt out on that. And now I'm, a, I'm now I'm like, want to go for like Americana sound or country mm -hmm. or something. So you don't. So, so I, I, so I think that you have to. There's a place for long, and there's a place for short, and they have they have slightly different um, things. Go ahead, Joe. Joe wants to say something. See, I don't do that anymore. Like all the teachings tell you to do your one year, five year, ten year plan, and mark those all out. And all that led me to do is have tablets upon tablets sitting around my house, <laughs> the same damn thing written down over and over and over again. I got nowhere. Okay. So I, I go from it from a totally different direction now. Um, all the training I've done um, beyond that has been like, where am I now? And where do I want to be? Where will my mindset allow me to believe I can get today? So if I'm at X amount in the bank and I'm in the progress of getting to X amount in the bank, which is my goal. So I set that goal. So right now, maybe I can only believe that I can only reach a hundred thousand in the bank. So that's what I'm in the progress of doing. And I'm at X amount now. And so I keep that measurement of all the cash flow I have 
where I'm at now, where I want to get, and I accept it, internalize it, and say, okay, I'm in the progress of getting here. I'm here. I need to work today on X amount of things. So then I move to, well, what are those things? And I have systems set up to figure out what those things are based on the number of calls I have, the number of clients I have, the number of projects I have to do. I have all these little, where am I now? Where do I want to be? And then what do I need to do to get there? And those things do adjust, but I have um, an, a, a software. It's really an electronic list of things that I'm going to do to get there today. Because as I do those things, my mindset will grow. Mm. I'll grow and I'll be able to do more and more over time. But if I don't use the, that thought process, I get caught up in all the different little like nuances of mm. what, what I'm going to do. And then there's, it gets larger than that. There's subsets of thoughts in that that I could go into, but I don't do the one year, five year, 10 year. I just do, I'm here. This is where I want to be. So basically this thing needs doing, get it done as soon as you can. Yeah. It, that's more of like a, like a financial goal, a health goal. Mm -hmm. um, maybe something like that. Something this big picture, like Lou was talking about a five, 10 year. I, I now wanna... when I get down into the like tasks, I do that completely different. I have an, mm -hmm. I have another way that I manage that. How do you manage that? Can you tell us? So I, I have a software and what I do is for each client and for myself, I put in, okay, if I have X amount in the bank and I want to get here and I've already had this many calls and made this many promises, what do I need to fill to not look like, a, you know, I'm failing? And so I list them out and then I take those and after they're list out for each client, I put on there a perspective date that I um, wish to achieve it for that client. Now it can be pushed out if I don't receive certain things from the client or if I, you know, certain things happen, but I always try to meet those things. And so when I wake up in the morning, first thing I do is take a shower, look at the scale. Okay. I'm at 193 today. I wish to be 170. I know I'm not on track. Try to remember that Joe, don't eat the wrong food, get out there and exercise today. And then if it's a, um, then I look at my registry for my, I have an Excel spreadsheet that brings in all my cash flow, everything going out, everything coming in. Okay. Well, I want to be at hundred thousand dollars in the bank and I'll just make up a number. I'm at $20,000. So I need to get my ass moving because I'm numbers driven. Um, and then I go into my Google calendar. What calls do I have today? Oh, I only have two calls today. I really need 10 calls a day to get a hold of enough clients to meet that hundred thousand dollars in the bank or X amount per month. Okay. And then I go into, if it's, I'm doing my kids homeschooling, I look at, I, this one's low tech. So I just go into his log book. I keep like a tablet and just keep a log book. Um, okay. We got this done yesterday. I know we got to do this, 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 this today. And then I go into teamwork with my clients. Like I said, I have a task list and I mark it. I either do, I, kind of keep the 80 20 rule in my mind which i don't know right right you two know the 80 20 rule right 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 else. 80 percent of the success comes from 20 percent of the effort so 80 percent right. so of the peas in your garden come from 20 percent of the seeds so to speak and then i look at the deadlines and then i kind of like red light green light it so if it's something i know okay i need these these deadlines have been promised to the client and I can get this, 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 this done real quick. I'm going to do that to build momentum. And then I'm going to pick the next things and pick the next things and get as much done as I can. In what, what, what I'm hearing you, what I'm hearing you say um, is something that you, you mentioned James Malinchek and I saw him do this. I believe it was him um, at a, uh, at a talk where he had, um, and maybe this was somebody else, Joe, but I, I thought it was him. Uh, he had a jar and he had a bunch of stones and he says, I've, the stones are all the, th the jar is the day or the goal or whatever, the day, the week, whatever. And the stones are the tasks. Mm -hmm. And so first he put on all the big stones. He's, I'll get the big things out of the way. Then I'll put, didn't fit. Then he said, well, I'll get the little things out of the way. Then I'll do the big things. Didn't fit. And then what he ended up doing was peppering in the little things around the big things. So what I'm hearing you kind of say is that like 
you know, if you're going down this road, uh oh, there's a snag. I got something over here that I can kind of work on to kind of still keep moving me towards where I want to go. I don't have to get hung up on the fact that, uh, shit, I'm waiting for Lou to send me those videos. He hasn't sent them to me yet. Okay, but I can go over here and I can tweak this thing while he's while I'm waiting on him to get his his stuff together. Yeah, it's continuous momentum and getting done whatever you can get done at that time. And sometimes, you know, it you may think you're going to go down this road and you're like, I keep getting caught up. If you start feeling that pressure, it's the path of least resistance. So if you start start feeling pressure and you know you're getting caught up in your your reptilian brain saying, mm -hmm. just quit, just quit, just quit change your focus change to something else there's something else you can be doing i mean and, and as musicians there's a lot uh that we can be doing i mean th this is uh like i just give an example with my band we have uh we've been i've been trying to get right as a band with these guys because i love something i miss doing everything on my own was the camaraderie and the feeling i love the fact that they feel ownership in the music as well mm. it creates like a you know they they're way more excited now about playing as opposed to me coming saying okay here's the song here's the song learn these parts learn these parts they mm. feel like they can do their own thing with them uh, however it is a little slower because we're working stuff out at the our weekly rehearsals and it takes a little bit of time so what i'm trying to find myself is like what can i do around that okay so that's like the big stone okay but there are little things i can do can i start coming up with lyric ideas or melody ideas like in between based on what we worked on can i come up with some other ideas for different sections of the songs that i can present to them and they can say that's great or that sucks we're not going to you know we want to do this and not that or to kind of inspire them <clears throat> so that's another example of you know in a, in a in a music situation where you know you're working on one thing you're you're hitting the wall it's not working out go do something else you know, or you're waiting on somebody like uh, another example is I, I, I think I shared this with you guys last week. I hired this awesome artist to do this song, uh, the, the artwork for this song. And I didn't notice on Fiverr she was backed up five weeks. Mm. Um, but I really like so I'm like, OK, that's no problem. I'm going to set that aside and work on something else. So I'm not just like sitting here twiddling my thumbs for five weeks i've got another song that i'm putting together and we're going to get that out instead we're just we're going to reverse the order it'll be fine um so being able to kind of like shift around there's a there's a uh, i can't remember if it was bob kiyosaki or one of those big like you know motivational you know rich dad poor dad guys uh, who said something like you don't want to like be climbing the ladder of success your whole life only to find out it's leaned up against the wrong building you want <laughs> you've got to be able to shift on your feet you've got to be able to joe that's a great um, a i love the way you you put that that's a great way to kind of like move around you know we're still going on our goal but sometimes we got to like oh this ain't working let's grab this real quick until this kind of settles down or whatever and I think a lot of people make you feel bad because they're like, you know, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. Why can't you get your stuff done? Well, so and, yeah, sorry, carry on. I want to address I, that. What, what I want to say about that is you only have so many energy units and focus units in your day. That's where I was and Facebook and Netflix and every family and everything else is trying to absorb those units. Okay. So you really got to figure out like, okay. Even though I have a list of 20 things I could do today and I want to get those done, what are the five things I absolutely have to get done? Because you've got to realize there are going to be some um, things pulling at your attention, but you also have to try to set boundaries. And that's where in my whole planning and focus um, and the topic of today, that's where I struggle is setting boundaries and um not letting other things like take my focus uh, every time i get on mm. facebook i lose 30 minutes. well i, I you said man i wrote this down energy units and focus units because one of the things the next thing i had on my list was energy is paramount um a lot of us are doing multiple, everybody here is doing multiple yeah. things. I mean, even if you are living at home <laughs> with your folks, you know, yes, you don't have, you have less of life's pressures on you, but you still have some, you still have other things mm -hmm. pulling at you. Well, and, and uh, let's get, and let's, so let's get, can I just finish the last point before we get on? Because I've got a lot to say about that. Okay. Um, oh, God. <laughs> but, um, but coming back again to the time thing. I want to get on to this. And, and using your particular example, Lou, is because you, you've got like a project that's work in progress at the moment. And you're, and you're before um, the point where you're going to pull the trigger on it, which basically puts you in pre-season mode on that particular project. 
So you're um, getting ready for that moment there. So the sort of things I'd be doing at that point. And this also comes for when, if I'm looking at my calendar going forward, and if I know that like teaching, I've got like a whole bunch of lectures coming up then, and then there'll be exams. And then I know that I won't be able to, I won't have much free time to do stuff at that point. But right now I'm not doing that just yet. That can motivate me to do a lot of stuff then creatively. That's basically planting seeds for stuff I can use later. And I don't expect to see any immediate returns, but it's stuff that's going to get, um, but it's stuff that I know that I will then be able to call back on later. Um, and certainly that's what I will call pre-season activities. In that case, you mentioned about writing, about um, getting the right artist behind you. Also just lurking in the right um, communities to see that where it is you're going to go and attack when you are ready to pull the trigger, mm. knowing where the venues are that you're going to be hitting when it's up there. And also be the point where you're the guy that's sort of like being around that. Um, I mean, people know who you are anyway from your podcast and from your radio shows and there's that. But it's the sort of thing where you can be in around, you can be in and around a community or an area, whether it's social media or whatever, where you plan to pull the trigger on your project when it's ready, but you don't even mention it until it is. Um, and until that day, people just get to know you as this guy who actually quite knows. Into it. And then at some point you mention, hey, I've been here a while. Do you know who I am? I just want to say I've got this thing now that I'm, that I'm launching. Immediately then you've got a, a community of people who are on your side. And also, you know how to talk to these people because you've been around them all that time. And often, I mean, every every project you do, you're sort of a beginner again when it comes to um, launching into that community, even if it's the same scene. The specific people that you're going for, I've certainly found that when I've been doing new things, is I've had to find a whole new group of people for each project who are tailored to whatever it is I'm saying there. So that's kind of the pre-season thing for me. When I'm working on something, I might not be ready to show it to anyone yet, but I am thinking about who might be wanting to hear it. And I'm so, I'm also trying to put myself in the mindset then of who those people are and what, and what it is they're about. And that's why uh, that's when it comes into the movies that are there. If if that that might be a matter as well, it might be a part of like finding out what movies and TV shows are like, and just checking them out, just getting into that idea as part of it. So, how, how, what what do you think about that? The preseason sort of uh, thing. Well, I think that uh, yeah, no, that that's um, a great idea. Of course, if you're uh, you know you're getting ready to, to you know you want to find out where that. Just put it this way, just put it very bluntly, where the fans are hanging out and kind of start kind of embedding yourself with mm -hmm. them and hanging out with them and creating, that's yeah. something you can do in an interim whenever you are sort of like waiting to, waiting, the al waiting for the album to be mastered or waiting for the, whatever you're in the middle of doing, you're not ready to play out yet. Like, it's another thing with my band is like, you know, we're like trying, I want to make sure that like when everybody's playing out that this band is ready and it's hot and we sound freaking awesome. So in the meantime, I am talking to other people in the business that have venues. I'm kind of strategizing who I'm going to make friends with, you know, and who we're going to like kind of create relationships with to be able to get out there and start playing. I think the key takeaway from that is that, you know, in the marketing scheme of things, um, there are different tasks at different stages. And when you're organizing things, however you do it, you know, whether it's in a tablet, Excel spreadsheet, or you have software, that's one of the things you have to consider is the steps for each stage. And that can allow you, you're not just looking at releasing an album. You don't have this big, like, I'm going to release an album that you then have pre-season or different stages mm -hmm. that I think Carrie could go in depth in um, more um, at some point where he can mm -hmm. talk, okay, these are the stages of releasing an album or we could. Yeah, we, could um, we, have a, we, we have a whole podcast on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are definitely ta like I was talking about tasks that you want to schedule and that you want to, um, you want to add to your, you know, things you're going to do units of your day that you're going to use. Those are important steps in that process. Um, I want to get into energy management, uh, be, but I want to say, because this is really important because this is another part of it. But what I want to say in response to what Joe just said and what Carrie just said is I, I had a guy teach me this many, many years ago and I never forgot about it. And I should use this more often. <laughs> and he says to plan everything in reverse. He says, start with the day that the thing is done. And it's you've reached that goal. OK, what happened the day before? And write mm -hmm. that down. 
And what happened the day before that? Or the, you know, what was the step right before that? Not necessarily the day, but what was, and then what was the step right before that? And, and go, uh, working all the way back to where you are right now. Um, mm. I think that that, I, I think it's very wise. It is not all, and he, he did uh, qualify what he's saying by saying like, even if you don't know what all the steps are, that's okay. You'll, you'll, you're, there's going to be some goals. You know, we've all seen the thing on social media, and I'm going to make a, a thing with my hand. And if you're listening, you won't be able to see it. Where, you know, what people think goal setting looks like, and it is a straight line from, you know, the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. And what it actually looks like is like a zigzag, and sometimes turning around and going back and refiguring things out and going to, to get to where you want to go. But <laughs> with that in mind, set, start at the end and start to plan your way back. Yes, you're going to make missteps. Yes, you're going to go like, oh, that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to so I gotta you know I have to think on my feet a little bit like we talked a little bit earlier but I think that it's a it, uh, it's a uh, it's a good way of doing it there and, and the other thing I want to say about the whole thing with goal setting whatever you decide to do set goals whether you decide to do it the way Carrie was talking about it, or the way Joe was talking about it, the way I'm mentioning it there's no like right way but set the goal and start thinking about start thinking about what the steps are that you're going to have to take to get there it's important to know to have some idea of the steps right guys you can't just yeah. be like i'm going to make i want to you know i want to make a million dollars and not have to pay any taxes well yeah. how do you do that and, well first get a million dollars then no pay any taxes <laughs> you know it's like yeah. you know you have to have some idea what the steps are going to be right uh, and remember that you're you're driving a ship in not a speedboat yeah yeah so, so if you're if you're in the progress of completing an album okay you know you want to complete an album, but you don't know all the steps. And you're like, okay, well, I'd like to complete that album by such and such a date. Okay, well, if I'd like to complete that album by such and such a date, what are the steps I know I have to do? Okay, write those down. I want to have each step done by this time. Then just start. Because like Lou said, the path to success and completing any project is a success. No matter what the results you get, it's a success because you've completed a project. Yeah, and and don't and don't be too going like this around and oh, I got to push this one out because I need this and I didn't know it. Okay, we'll do that. That happens, and yeah. then keep Every, going. That happens to the most. <laughs> that I mean, like you look at the like the big, you know, the giants, the captains of industry or whatever. They will tell you the same thing. They set out to do something and then they had to go back and turn around and stop and, you know, go sideways. And oops, I didn't realize I needed this. You don't know. But if you don't start, you know, if you have what's the Martin Luther King Jr. said something really great one time. He said, you don't have to know all the steps. Just start. Just take the first step. You don't, what does he say? Oh, you don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. So take the steps. Do the best you can. You're going to stumble. You're going to make mistakes. Shit happens. But keep going. Um, but Joe, I want to get back to something that Joe said uh, a couple of minutes ago, and I, I loved this. You said energy units and focus units, which is something that, like, they're not exact. This is going to sound – I don't want to get too woo-woo about this uh, type of stuff. Uh, because you can't – I don't know how we me actually me literally me measure an energy unit or a focus unit, but tr it's true. I don't know how you actually come down to what an energy unit is or a focus unit is. Um, technically, ca a calorie is a unit of energy, but that's a different subject. Um, but you only have so much to give every day, every week. That's – you only got so much. And so I want, I want to kind of put a couple of things out here. A lot of us are the day job is a fact of life at the moment. OK, and maybe it will always be. Maybe you're not like maybe you just want to like create a good fan base and sell some records and, you know, have your music, have some kind of impact. You're not necessarily looking to make it a full time income. That's fine, too. Um, but you have uh, you do not want to allow um, other things to rob your energy. So. When stuff goes side, other things are kind of going sideways in your life and you're frustrated or whatever, be cognizant of what that's doing to your energy. Because what can happen is you can have, you can allow yourself to get caught up in so much stress about day to day stuff that you don't have the energy to do the, the, the stuff to work, um, 
on your on on your musical goals. I the same guy that taught talk, taught me about planning from the end also said, do not allow uh, short term problems to dictate to your long term goals. So, you know, the kids. I couldn't get the kids on the school bus this morning. We don't. We're not. Nobody's going to school right now. <laughs> but just as an example, and I'm like really <laughs> mad and frustrated. And you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay. So allowing that to kind of like rob all your energy. So before ten o'clock in the morning, now you're burnt out, right? You know what I mean? You're like you're pissed off. You don't. You know what I mean? You know. Okay. So be cognizant of stuff like that because what do you think that's going to do when you want to sit down and you want to? write write music or uh you know sit down and, and, and write your blog or record your podcast or whatever it's just a total suck on your um on your energy that's just one example i think you guys have some comments on this so i'd like to say that it, to me it's about deliberate thinking so i'm going to use lou's example so john has to be homeschooled now because of covid19 and even if next year comes around you know, he still has to be homeschooled because I'm not willing to take that risk. So I have to accept the fact that in from 8 a.m. till 3, 4 p.m., I need to be, you know, there and present with my son. You know, Deliber I, deliberately, I know that that's where I have to be. So instead of focusing on work and what I can't do that day, I have to be there in a the moment with him. And then when it comes time for the end of that day to roll around, I've got to think, OK, is do I, should I get stressed out and spend an hour or two on Facebook or Netflix trying to get over my stress of, oh, I didn't get anything done today for work? Or do I take him for a walk, decompress, give him something to do, and then get into it? Okay, now I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things I was going to do today. But because I only have four hours, I am going to do, one, you know, one three and five, because those are the things my clients need the most now to achieve their goals. And I need to meet those promises. And tomorrow is a new day. Like deliberately stay away from all the things that everybody's trying to pull you into like Facebook and Netflix and TV. And, you know, someone's calling me, they want me to run out and get them something from the store or whatever the case may be. And if it's not important, now I'm not saying ignore your friends and family, mm -hmm. but if it's not important and someone else can do it, just say, hey, I'm sorry, but I have this other thing that I have to get done today and try to set boundaries. I suck at that. Like, that's my hardest thing. But like, if you think deliberately and you know where your ship's going, you know that you're going from point A to point B and you can try to be in the moment and just pick the things that you know you have to do. Um, absolutely. And uh, try to avoid freak outs. I'm, this is my bad thing. I'm a hot blooded Italian guy and I, uh, you know, I get angry and throw shit and stuff like that. And what ends up happening is like, yeah, that's a kind of a release in the moment, but what ends up happening is it actually robs me of my, um, uh, robs me of energy. So, you know, okay, that bad thing happened. I didn't like that. I was upset. This person didn't, uh, you know, it, you know, carry out what I asked him to do. All right, how am I going to handle it? By remaining calm, you know, and remain re reminding myself, hey, I only have so much energy today, and I have o only so much focus, and I blow it all on this situation that like just happened, or maybe I made a mistake too, or whatever. That is going to kill. That could that could potentially kill the rest of it. Make it very very difficult for me to get back into a mm. calm place or a place where I can actually think. Because once you get into like uh, anger and frustration, so those things, this proven fact, it shorts out creativity. You can't when you know what I mean. You just you can't be. I mean, yes, I know people have said you know well some terrible thing happened and I wrote a song about it. Um, maybe later you can, <laughs> but but in the moment you know as you're like having some kind of sh some kind of fit it's you're probably not sitting there with your guitar or the keyboard or whatever <laughs> writing the song all right so um try to really rain and be very cognizant of these energy units and these folk focus is a, is another thing um gary vaynerchuk has I've, I've heard him talking about this too and he's like he says people come up to me and say i can't believe you're not watching game of thrones or whatever he's like he's like 
there's no way I'm going to allow that to steal my focus. Like, that's cool, and I'm glad you like that. But, I mean, in today's world, when you can watch an entire season of a television show all at once, it, the pull away from your goals is, like, really strong. It's because, a movie that never ends. Yeah. I've got caught up in a couple series, and you just think, okay, I'm going to watch an a episode while I'm eating dinner because I deserve that break. Yeah. And it just one thing leads into another and you're like, this movie's never ending. And then you're like, it's a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so be careful be really careful about stuff like that. I know it's very tempting and all your friends are telling you how great this is or how great that is, but you get stuck in those things. And it honestly, that, that type of thing, that, that whole Netflix, uh, Amazon prime uh, Hulu thing is very similar to what people do when they get lost on social media. Before you know, you're just sitting there with the thumb, just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And what happens, right? You know, we all, and I don't, you know, we all have our different socio political views. And somebody says something that really pisses us off. And we're so, you know, and then you want to say something back. They're wrong. You know, I have to, you know, you're up half the night telling somebody why they're wrong about whatever. <laughs> You know, and is that really going to help anything? First of all, it's not going to help the world situation, number one. Number two, it's just robbing you of energy and focus that you could be doing. If you're really upset about something in the world, you see that, turn off Facebook and go write a song about it. I've also found <laughs> that, like, Lou reacts now, right? I don't. Like, I I start to internalize it, and, like, the, the frustration, the anger, the pain just festers. And it like stays with me. And sometimes I don't even realize it. Yeah. And like, I'm thinking about that and then I'll wake up and I'll start writing and I'll be like writing all these things about why I don't, that's not right. And blah, 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 blah. And then when I get done with it, I'm like, dude, that has nothing to do with what you do for a living. You're never going to publish that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, why did I allow that to take my focus? The, so the, yeah, I mean, we're, like, a lot of people allow are, yourself to yeah. feel the feeling. Yeah and know that it's happening and then try to let it go if you can right if, if um, it's if it's not something that if it's not something you can do anything about you know if it's not something like you know where you know you uh, joe could like sit down with johnny and work with him on something you know what i mean that's something you can take care of you can work on but if it's something that somebody on facebook is halfway around the world or halfway across the country you're getting yourself all caught up in something that's really not going to really serve you unless you're like a musician like me and carrie the only thing we could do right carrie is we could turn we could turn that into music but you got to make sure that that's what you do <laughs> and not sit there and just bs your time away you know getting caught up in in stuff like that i i really think there's just we're just there's so many distractions and that's one of them the netflix right thing now. all that stuff is just one conversations about the world getting yourself all whacked out over things um i you know i i, I know that this is not realistic and can't apply to every situation but uh Sometimes it's good to say, how is this moving me closer to my goals or is this taking me farther away? Just to kind of ask yourself the question. Right. I know making dinner is not necessarily bringing you close to your closer to your musical goals. You have to eat. And sometimes you're just having fun conversations with friends. But just kind of being keeping that in your mind as you're going throughout the day. Like, what is my goal? What is my focus? And is getting all angry about this situation, is that really going to help me? Is this just going to make me more tired later when I want to sit down and, and, and work on music? Or is this going to just like, you know, am I going to get my mind all caught up in something and then I'm not going to be able to focus? You know, what, what, whatever. So just kind of be cognizant of stuff like that. I'm not telling you not to be active in whatever thing you believe in, but be aware of what is it that's doing to your uh, time, your energy, and your focus. I think that's yeah. kind of what I'm saying. Carrie, what do, you, what do you want to say about it? Yeah, hey. your brain's a reptilian brain, and it likes to be lazy. So, <laughs> And it's going to tell you to run away from anything that's hard. Yeah. So you've got to ask yourself, is this something that I'm doing just the just because my brain's telling me to pass the time or is this something that I really need to be doing and I should be doing that's going to achieve a goal? You know, yeah. am I in the moment with my family, my work, whatever's important to you, we all have our own things that's important or am I just numbing myself? Right. Right. Am I just numbing myself? That's a good question. Well, Carrie, you, I know you're trying to say something, Joe and I, well, I mean, I, like, um, I think part of it is, um, yeah, pick your battles. But um, I mean, also I have outlets. 
I mean, like, especially when I mean, we're, we're dealing with people who are artists here, this sort of being a musician. <laughs> and, and often we are artists because we are utterly dysfunctional human beings. So there's going to be a lot, there's going to be a lot of um, negativity and a lot of issues there that need sorting out. And the way we happen to sort it out is by writing it down into things in abstract ways. And that works for us. Um, going off and, um, and going off and getting into flame wars. Um, I've sort of always sort of trying to avoid it because I've sort of like seen enough of them to sort of know how that goes and knows that there's like nothing comes of it. It's like there's time, there's times to fight and there's times to say, you know what, you're not worth it and walking away. Um, Joe, you, you're a martial arts guy. I don't know if you've ever done door work or spoken to anyone who's done door work. But like one of the things that people who do, who, who have done will say, one of the things they always have trained is that it's the bigger man who walks away. And the, the scrappers are the ones who think they've got to prove themselves constantly. Right. And that ultimately is destructive because every, I mean, what, I mean, the way I've, the way I've lived my life, the way I've been around, I've been, I've, I think I've had to, I've never had to, I've never actually had to be in a fight. Uh, I've come close to being in one once where I've had to be stand up ready to fight and that then de-escalated. More often, I've just walked away from fights. And one of the reasons for that was when I've been in those situations, um, the sort of like, the view in my mind has been, okay, so what happens here? This guy attacks me, I hit him back. What happens then? Either I go down or he goes down. If if I go down, then ouch. If he goes down, what happens then? Do I celebrate? No, he comes back with his mates. Maybe he goes to the police. Yeah, then you're in a Maybe whole I lose world my of freedom. Crap. It's not or, the end of it. Or, it's just and and worse in a, we have a point. very litigious society yeah. too, man. Like you yeah. get sued, like it's crazy. So I Nobody mean, I, yeah, let's not get into yeah. stuff that's like going to take your, it definitely, no, please don't be going out and getting into physical altercations with people. Yeah. Like, I've got to think that that's kind of implicit. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, we but, and are that, saying don't, rock, is don't, we don't lose your energy and focus. Don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. But it was the same thing is with arguments. The same thing is with, and I probably shouldn't say this, but, you know, rioting and stuff like that. Like you go do those things. Those are distractions taking away from your power. And even if you're going out to get a message out, there's a better way. Like, you know, it's the media and everybody convincing you to do things. Okay, I want to get off the subject. Taking your power away let, let, from you. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about. It. I want to turn into it because mm. that's it's a touchy subject, and different people have different attitudes. Um, so what I'm, what I think that uh, the next one thing I have on my list, and I think Joe kind of touched on, and we kind of touched on with the energy thing was, a, I, I call it a time diet. <laughs> okay, where maybe yes. I like Game of Thrones or The Sopranos or whatever the hot new thing is. Okay, and I'm literally going to put myself on a time diet, though. I'm, you know, while I'm eating my dinner, when dinner, when I'm done, I literally turn it off and I can come back. So what I started to do a few months, well, about a month or so ago was really rein all that in. I had a friend of mine gift me a subscription to HBO and she's like, you got to watch Game of Thrones. You've never seen it. <laughs> and the first weekend, I would admit, I binged. After that, I was like, I could see where this was going. And so, like, it's like, and I finish that last bite of food and I go to the sink, it goes off. You know, and then I allow myself a few, like, as I'm winding at the very, very end of the night, like, before I'm going to go to bed, maybe another half an hour. And that's it. Okay, so you, I don't know how that works for uh, you out there in podcast listening land, how whatever you have to do, but you have to create some kind of, I call it a time diet. Uh, same way with social media. You know, you're only going to spend so much time jerking around on social media. If you like it, I mean, we should do things we enjoy doing. I mean, I, mean, I think that like if all you, I might had a, another mentor who used to say if like all you do is music and you don't do life, then you don't, then your music doesn't really have any mm. real soul to it. So you got to do life. You got to go out and get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a relationship. You got to, you know, you know, do the family thing. You, you know what I mean? You got to go to the park. You got to do, see movies. You have to get involved, you know, take up a, whatever kind of hobbies you're like, whatever. Um, that's totally, it's very, we're not telling you not to live your life, but I just, this idea of a sort of like time diet where I, you know, these super frivolous time sucking activities that you kind of like, like TV and social media, just kind of put yourself on a little bit of a restriction. You know, I, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I carry around an actual kitchen timer. Oh, cool. Put the, put the kitchen, put a kitchen timer. Don't rely on your phone because it will happen if you do your phone. 
you'll start screwing around on Twitter or something. <laughs> so, you know, just get a timer if you have to or whatever. But however you have to do it, you don't have to be that strict about it. But however you have to do it, just got to rein that in, you know, enjoy it, but rein it in. Make sense, guys? I, I use Alexa for my timer, and I do that for John's schooling and for some of my projects because I like <laughs> to work an hour and a half and then give myself a 10-minute break just to stand up, you know, do a couple jump mm-hmm. jacks, whatever the case may be. But I never thought of using it for, like, making sure that at the end of my dinner I didn't keep binging Supergirl. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other thing, nice example. The other, thing, the other thing I want to talk about, and I, I think Carrie, Carrie, and I can really relate to this. Um, and this is a really bad thing with, with especially with guitar players. Uh, maybe drummers and singers and uh, keyboard players maybe have the same issue, but this is really a bad thing for guitar players. And that is screwing around with music instead of actually doing any real music work. So I'll give an example. You 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 set up you you plug in your guitar and what do you start doing? You start twiddling around with the knobs. You start getting out different effects. You start just kind of like pissing around. You're just, you're playing your favorite riffs. You know you're falling back into your Metallica, your Nirvana, your Zeppelin, whatever. And whoa, stop! <laughs> this is I'm sure this is wildly entertaining for you. <laughs> I'm sure you're having a good time, but w- just because you have the guitar in your hand does not necessarily mean you're making any progress. Um, d- d- is this? Have you ever run into this, Carrie? Um, probably not so much. Just I, <laughs> I, I did that long thing. ago. <laughs> um, more often now when I do it, and also because I don't get to because um, I've always got other things I've been doing. When I do sit down to play, it's with something in mind. And anything that I do like that will then be on on route to what it, whatever it is I'm working on. I call it technical. That sort of thing, what you've just described, I call technical repertoire. And it's stuff that I'm practicing because it's going to lead on to something else that I'm going to use myself. Um, I won't just do it because I want to. Uh, also, I've, I've always been like being more creative than recreative. I sort of kind of did it. Even, even when I was learning, I wasn't that big on doing something exactly as it was on the record. I more wanted to take the essence of it and then just get enough to be able to take it in my own direction. That's what motivated me. I think if you're doing that, good. But when you're, but, uh, I, and some of you out there, you know who you are, and I'm, so I'm preaching mm-hmm. to myself because I do it. I have to rein myself. Some I have to rein myself. I'm, I'm coming across as very undisciplined today. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those things, and it's. I think it's very tempting um, for certain musicians. You, you know, I don't know if drummers run into this as well, but you just get caught up because you can play that thing so well, and it sounds so good, and you know, you just kind of want to sound good. You that isn't really making you any progress. So be careful. I'm not going to harp on this. I've said it. Just be careful. Just be mindful that, like, stop. Okay, yeah, you you sat down here for twenty minutes and you played every Led Zeppelin riff. You know, stop. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's just, what are we doing here? You know, are you actually going to start a Led Zeppelin tribute band or something, or you know, are you just kind of entertaining yourself? So yeah. just be careful that you're not just doing stuff just to uh, just to kind of screw around with the, with the music. Um, and let's talk a little wee bit here at the end about prioritizing musical projects and activities. Mm-hmm. You know, wh- uh, how do how how should somebody think uh, uh, um, about I, that? I can just throw something out here. At this, this is going to be a bit of a span in the works. But here's something counterintu- counterintuitive that I once did that okay. actually increased my musical pro- productivity. Love it. Let's hear it. And that was to buy a PlayStation. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. If now I, I wish I had that that sound by whoa, 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 what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now here's why. Here's why I did that. I bought a PlayStation. And at the same time, I uninstalled all the games from my computer. I decided that any time I'm gaming from now on, it's going to be on the PlayStation and not on my computer. And that was something I made myself do at that time. Now, the reason why I did that, I still wanted to, do, I still wanted to be gay because I like playing games. And also, it was taking me in journeys and games were sort of inspiring some of what I was doing anyway. So that was part of um, how I was living life and consuming media. But I thought, while they were on my computer... When I switch on my computer in the morning and sit down at it, um, I'll probably end up working on it. But then at some point, I'll probably switch on Half-Life or whatever it was playing at the time. And then I'd look at the clock and I spent four hours playing Half-Life instead of doing work. <laughs> now, if I went to play that game on the console instead of on my computer, 
then at least I know that is time when I'm playing that game. And I can't pretend that I'm at my work. You can't, my computer you can't BS, you can't BS um, yourself. There's right? an, there's a, there's an old aphorism. I think it's a Victorian one. Um, when, when at work, don't be at rest. And when at rest, don't be at work. Mm. And you've got to do both. But there's know also, which it is and have boundaries. <laughs> there's also a good point you made there of separating your environments and having your environment mm. set up for that thing that you want to do. So like I said, I wanted to be in the moment with my son. Um, you also want to separate your environment. And if your computer is where you do your work in your office or your music or whatever, you know, then in there where the PlayStation is, you know, in your living room or wherever that is, is your place to decompress and relax and play the PlayStation. So then you can control your time in those places and do what those places were meant for you to do. Yeah. And don't just not mixing them up. Right. Yeah. You're working. Well, I mean, I, um, I uh, started doing podcasts with for for some other businesses and I work with one of the one of them is a health coach and we talked about sleep and uh, you know this is a this is a thing in the health uh, world about sleep is that the bed needs to be the bed for sleeping and this is one thing one of the reasons why people have a hard time you know people they can't sleep they're doing too many things in bed they're like they're on their computer in bed they're on their cell phone in bed they're watching TV in bed stuff like that and it does not get the mind well, you know, your mind needs to be when we're in the bed, this is sleeping time. And it is actually when people eliminate that other stuff and make the room completely all about sleep and the bed and everything becomes about sleep, they get better rest and they fall asleep faster. So, so it's something that we are wired for. So you start to, it's like, it's, you're sending yourself kind of subliminal cues whenever you or mixed messages whenever the computer in your studio you also play games on or you also use to, uh, you know, just screw around on YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever for you. You know what I mean? So you're kind of like you're, you're allowing your, your – you're, you're making that mix up there. What did you say? Never – what, play when you're resting? Um, rest- when um, – uh, I use it in the original sort of syntax. When, when at work, be not at rest. When at rest, be not at work. Exactly. Good. I mean, that, that's and so so all those th- things right there, um, just just keep that in mind, you know, have a de- and this is the thing that you hear um, success. People talk about time like have your designated workspace and do your work in there and do your other stuff in other places. I mean, I, I mean, and if and if it's and if it is your West time and work tries to get into that, tell them to get lost. Yeah. I, I understand why um, some people cannot really get any work done in a home studio. They have to go to a studio. I find it's te- it's th- this is something that I've run into here. And I, after I get all this stuff, and I always wanted a home studio. I'm like I'll get so much more done. There's also the screwing around thing in the studio and, and using the computer for stuff you're not supposed to be, etc. Multitasking in it, etc. And there's that, always some drama. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, and and I'm lucky because I don't I don't have the families if I don't have like. But if you had like a family and you had the kids running in and out and everything like that, you know, that that's gonna make it hard. So it's just something to consider. And I don't know how you work that out with your family, Joe. How do you do that? Do you have? Do you say? Hey, do you tell your, your family like, look, this I'm in here. I'm working. So you know, it's like kind of off limits unless an emergency. Like, how do you handle that? That boundaries thing is very hard for me when it comes to family. Um, I tend to, if I'm in a meeting or have a, a live to do, it works well because it's scheduled. I tell them like that, that's that. This is, has to happen. I close my door. I lock it and no one comes in unless my wife's bringing me a drink or something. Um, but when it comes to like doing the work itself, um, I'm in here quiet and they can't hear me in a meeting with someone. So they think that they can just come in. Yeah, he's not doing any. Oh, your dad's not doing anything. Go ahead. And- <laughs> yeah. So I still lock the door. I still tell him, look, I got to get this done. Um, but I like peace and quiet while I'm working, especially when I'm working with code. And that does get, it gets difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I try to do a half or uh, I try to do an hour and a half and then 10 minutes and if I have to stop and go to the restroom, especially if I leave the room, oh my gosh, the second I walk out the door, it's like, hey, you want to go to the store? You want to go out to play? It's it's not easy. You just you just have to keep telling them, I got to get back to work. I got to get back to work. And sometimes you seem insensitive and you're just like, I got to get back. I got to 
do this. This is how I make the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, programming is a great example. I mean, like, say I, pro- I can program a bit of code, but it's not my thing. But what I do program is MIDI a lot. And um, and you probably go through the same process. So it's like um, when I was, uh, especially when I've been in the band doing that and we we're all working together as a band, when I was when I was programming and they saw us at the computer doing some programming, they know that um, it's not... It's not just that I'm not to be disturbed. It's that if I do, if someone does talk to me just then, then they shouldn't really expect me to be to be listening because I'm somewhere else mm-hmm. when I'm in front of a pet when I'm in front of um something that I'm doing there. I'm thinking this is going to lead to that. It's like it's it's like a mind palace. I'm somewhere else trying to make this thing happen with uh, zeros and ones. I had the and, same um, issue at work. Yeah. So like, if someone if, if someone like... to- yeah if somebody talks to me right then at that point. And I listen to them. I'll kind of do it, but they're going to have to wait a few seconds for me to come back out of where I've been. And they don't always appreciate that. I think this is a really good discussion. I'm always uh, uh, like, you know, really tickled when we come into a, a topic that's kind of wide open and could go a lot of different places. It's very interesting to hear everybody's different perspectives. On it. Everybody's got something they want to say about it. Everybody has a different experience with the topic mm-hmm. and brings a different perspective. Um, I think that's one of the things that really makes the calls really, really cool. Uh, I learned a lot today. I got a lot out of it. I, I hope that you did, too, listening. Um, before we uh, wrap up, we got any final thoughts? Uh, Joe, any final thoughts? No, just you know, think deliberately and know what you want in life and like try that. to work towards it. Keep that goal front and center. You know, so yeah. when something starts to pull, you say, well, well wait a minute. <laughs> I'm supposed to be recording that album. I can't watch six episodes of Sopranos tonight. <laughs> you guys helped me today because like that whole like I deserve to watch a little bit of a movie and sit with my wife um, and watch an episode of this has really sometimes gone into hours. And, it, <laughs> you know, I was all proud I didn't have a TV, but. She talked me into buying one. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate. I don't watch Netflix on my computer anymore. Yeah, yeah you watch it on a TV that you sit mm-hmm. down so you know that that's what you're doing. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think the other thing as well, and this is, uh, I mean, we could probably do a whole other session just on this. But um, one of the um, comparison that I'll often make is with Olympic athletes. Now, Olympic athletes are amateurs. It's not their job. And so they have day jobs as well. So they are training to compete at an international level for uh, opportunity that comes around every four years and even then might not for whatever reason. And everything is geared towards that. And that is among that is alongside doing a regular day job, having regular family life, everything else that we have to do. How do they do it? Because they want it. Yeah. And if something is your passion and if something is what you do and it's what you uh, want to do anyway, one way or another, you will find a way. To keep that in mind, if it all looks like it's getting too much and you're thinking about too much how it happens, just get back to just doing it somehow and paths will open up. The other thing is after the event, often there's times when I've sort of got completely snowed under and thought, there's no way I'm going to do this or this doesn't happen. Then I've looked back at it a few days later and thought, actually, I could have done that then, I could have done that then, I could have done that then, that then, that then. Yeah. If I had just got on with it at the time, I probably would have. Great yeah. analogy and you've mentioned the uh, olympic athlete thing before carrie i i i love that um that comparison it's really really good these people <laughs> they i, I mean some of them set like world records on a on a gig that's a part-time gig <laughs> and uh, so it's like well what is your excuse you know yeah. all you're trying to do is put out a couple of songs like you know this guy set the record in the whatever you know so you know that's it that is a great and uh, keep that in yeah. mind guys keep the keep keep the olympia uh, uh olympic athletes in mind as you as you uh go through this all right carrie how do how do folks find you on the internet again uk and uh joe how do folks find you buddy LulombardiRocks.com. Just tag me in the um, chat bot there and I can help you out. Um, my name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini. Uh, you can find me as well at LulombardiRocks.com. Uh, in the uh, notes... And as well as on the YouTube uh, channel, the link to our mastermind group is there. We love uh, it's a really cool community, very supportive folks. Any questions or whatever you have throughout the week, there's a Facebook group. You you know, we'll uh, w- some of us will get back. One of us, 
usually multiple people will get back to you and uh, help you out on any on any issues you're having uh, related, related to your music business. Guys, thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you all on the next Ludini Rock and Roll Circus Musicians Mastermind. Okay, cool. And goodbye, Facebook. End live video. That's it. Okay, I did. All right. And good night, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs>